Welcome back, SMT Nation. In today's episode, we're going to do a deep dive into C band, Verizon, ATT, and the widening channels of N77 C band for Verizon. All right, so we're going to focus on how they're going to be creating a ton of capacity, specifically in places that are getting early clearance of more C band. The channel bandwidth will be increasing. All right, so here's the basic premise of today's video. Pictured here, and this is from the SashaJavid.com website, covering all of the information that you would need to know about Spectrum Auction 107 and C-Band. Uh, for the basic premise of why I'm covering this in this video is in order to explain you know, how, say, for example, T-Mobile has a lot of N41 spectrum. In some places, they've got like 160 megahertz of it, and it's really, really fast. Well, how is Verizon going to do this? How is AT&T going to do this? This video will explain all that and where they can do it because it's all location-based. All right, let's start first with how this is all set up. C-band Spectrum, when they did the auction, Spectrum Auction 107, they did so in three blocks of Spectrum. There is the A block, which was first made available. Uh, this is 3.7 to 3.8 gigahertz. There is 100 megahertz of Spectrum in the A block. And... The way that this worked out is AT&T has 40 megahertz of it and Verizon has 60 megahertz of it. So this little pie chart here indicates that 60% Verizon, 40% AT&T. T-Mobile didn't really need it, right? They have plenty of N41, the EBS BRS 2.5 gigahertz. They were in no rush to pay the premium pricing in the auction for this stuff. So this all went to AT&T and Verizon. Again, a majority to Verizon. Obviously, these two companies, mid-band 5G spectrum starved, will not need more. Here you go, right? The B block and the C block are later cleared. They're going to clear next year, with the exception of places where Verizon seems to be willing to pay satellite operators to repack it and get early clearance in certain places. They're paying money to those satellite companies to accelerate that repack and get it ready for cellular terrestrial usage. All right, so you've got 100 megahertz in B block. You have 80 megahertz in C block. And that's where you're going to start to see AT&T and Verizon widening their channels of N77. So going from 60 and 40 megahertz to 100 and 140 and 160 and 200 megahertz for Verizon in some cases. So I'm going to go ahead and link this for you guys. You can see all the money they spent. You can see all the different carriers and holdings companies that bought Spectrum in this auction. All right, Cellco Partnership is Verizon. And then AT&T and Spectrum Frontiers, right? That's AT&T. Here's US Cellular in that little green percentage. Here's T-Mobile. They're in that little like uh, magenta purplish, right? All right, so now that we've got like those fundamentals there, here's how the Verizon breakdown works. They have secured a minimum 140 megahertz of C-band across the U.S. In a lot of places, though, they've got 160, 180, 200. I'll show you guys a map of that in a second. Currently, they have 60 megahertz that they can use in 46 markets. That number is going to be widening and increasing. More markets will clear in 2023 to get more of that spectrum. All right. Now, um, the reason why this is important to, to see that they got 200 megahertz in some places is because two things. Number one, it shows you how serious they're going to be about probably doing fixed wireless access 5G home in those places. And then also probably for IAB or wireless backhaul from site to site to provide capacity uh, and, and give, you know, what should normally be fiber. They could also do it wirelessly. Right. So um, let me show you guys a map of where they're going to have certain amounts of spectrum and C-band. All right. So here's all the states. You guys kind of know the shapes like here's Texas. A lot of Texas has 200 megahertz. They're going to create a lot of capacity in Texas. Uh, you'll see Georgia has a lot of locations that have 200 megahertz. That's actually what we're going to focus on next. A little bit of Ohio, right? So you got like the south, southeast, a little bit in the western part. My PA, I believe, has 140 or 160 megahertz of spectrum. Uh, it might be 140, I think, just based on that shade, right? You'll see the lightest color shade is 140 megahertz. The darker it goes, the more spectrum depth is there. Uh, you will see here in like Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, 200 megahertz across all these states, full coverage. Uh, most of Nevada is 200. 
parts of Nevada, 180. All right, you guys can see how this works. Uh, here's like the New York market. You know, here's upstate New York. You guys can do this all on your own time if you want to look at specific places. Uh, what we're going to be focusing on here is Spectrum ownership, where Verizon has already started to go 100 plus megahertz of Spectrum. All right, now, as a quick thing, I just want to help some people out. People have been asking, how do I know if my area has uh, CBRS? This is just a question that's been coming up over and over again. All right, um, let's do Georgia, for example, okay? Uh, Georgia has no CBRS in for P1. This represents the blocks of Spectrum. By the way, 10 megahertz of licensed Spectrum, 10 megahertz sub-blocks for CBRS. Different than, say, for example... Uh, C band, which is 20 megahertz sub blocks, but let me show you guys. All right, so no P1 sub block in Georgia, no P2. Here's P3. You have, uh, and and part of my pronunciations for some of these cities, okay? Obviously, Atlanta is that Alpharetta and Athens. They've got 10 megahertz of PALs in this frequency range here, okay? This the CBRS. All right, so they got 10. Here's another 10, so that's 20 in those two places. That's 30 in those two places, and that's 40 in Athens. All right, so 30 in Atlanta and 40 in Athens, just to give you guys an idea of how much spectrum is there. All right, now um, let's get into the, the crux of this video. All right, here is your C-band holdings for Verizon. All right, you'll see the blocks here. These are the A blocks, for example. All right, you'll see them letter numbered from A1 to A5. So this is 20 megahertz right here for all of Georgia. All right, notice there is no spectrum here for this usage, right? So you see these PALs, private access licenses. So that's 20 megahertz. You'll see this little portion up here by like South Carolina. All right, I don't know if that's this border part right here is considered Georgia. It might be. Anyways, here's another 20 for A2. There's that same part over by Greenville and Anderson, right? Here's A3, another 20. That's 60 megahertz A block so far, okay? Here's that part again, Anderson and Greenville. All right, so what do you have in the A block so far? You've got 100 megahertz. You saw me click on A1 through A5. You see what I'm saying? You see how they're calculating that? That's just A block. So they've got a ton of spectrum there. Now here's the B blocks, right? We do Georgia for B. You got B1 to B5, 20, 40, 60. Then you got like half of Georgia, a little more than half, has 80. And then 100. So 60 or 100. So you're doing your math of the combination of these, right? You're talking about like 140 to 160 megahertz across the state between the A block and the B block. You see what I'm saying? So they're going to be clearing these, right? And the reason why I wanted to go over this, to, just to show you guys how to use this tool, I'll go ahead and link the website, is this is how they're going to be going 100 megahertz plus in you know different parts of georgia and they're early clearing and getting that repack from satellite operators to start widening those channels early and not having to wait through the rest of next year you guys know that certain parts of georgia are densely populated you know you're looking at some of these bigger markets right like atlanta for example that's a top pea that's definitely top 10 100 in fact i'm not even really sure what they've done so far and built out all right, so let's take a look at the Verizon Ultra Wideband Map. And I'm going to link all these tools for you guys to check out. All right, let's go ahead and look in Georgia. This is Verizon's current map for Georgia. And you will see that, oh, there it is. It, it shows you all the different color shades. Most of Georgia is on DSS 5G, the low band 5G, and LTE. But if you zoom in, you will see that they have started to build out you know, certain parts of the ultra wideband network. All right, so you'll see, you know, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. 
there's one part here just outside of Atlanta. So I don't know if this is like the county, the PA, however they do this. Here's Atlanta right here in the center. You will see the airport just south of there, uh, of this circle. And you'll see Athens over there. We're going to go to Athens in a second. But you see where that dark red, these little splotches are? Those are 5G ultra wideband sites. When they splotch like that, it's showing you the lobes of how these tower sites propagate and give off signals. So near the three branches segment of this city, Holly Springs, Lebanon, I don't know these places. But I can tell you right now, there are N77 C-band sites out here. That's how you get these splotches of coverage. I don't know how many sites this is. Maybe it's a couple, maybe two, three sites. All right, let me show you guys some other places. These might be tower sites here in these segments. So like Northwest Corridor Express Lanes, they've got some coverage there. Uh, just outside of Woodstock, Colony Woods got some coverage. Okay, so to show you guys how to read this and, and kind of view these maps, here's another segment of town. What city is this? I'm not sure if it's over by Creek Hollow South. Like, I've never been to these places. Knox Landing. I have no idea. But those are splotches and areas where they have the 5G Ultra Wideband. All right, so let's go over to Atlanta. I want you guys to notice something. There's no C-band. When you see these lines like this, just these lines of coverage of 5G Ultra Wideband, that's millimeter wave. So they are going to start getting a substantial 5G ultra wideband build with N77 as now they're getting that stuff early cleared and repacked from satellite. All right, here's another spot here that's got N77 5G ultra wideband, the C-band. I don't know what city, what city is this here? What are we looking at? It's not Atlanta. It said Cascade Road. I don't know if anybody's from here. It's just north of Sandtown. I have no idea where that is. South of Adamsville. It looks like they got maybe one or two sites, possibly just one. Here's just south of Atlanta Airport, uh, Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport. Looks like they've got a few sites. Briarwood, Oak Forest. All right, what else? Ginger Hills is covered. Got some ultra-wideband. West of Fayetteville. All right, what else? These areas are all going to be getting 100-plus megahertz of C-band very soon. So these areas already have the coverage. They're just going to widen those channels. They can go up to 100 megahertz on a single channel with 5G. Uh, what is this? What, what place is this? Did I already cover this? Hill and Dill Drive, Farrington, Stonecrest, just north of Stonecrest. I don't know where that is. This is happening, guys. This is actually live. There are places that are going to be getting the 100 megahertz happening, like right now. That's Georgia getting that early repack, getting more spectrum. So from this video, some of the things you learned probably, uh, the spectrum depth that Verizon has, and then also where they can start doing this, the early repack, you know, all the spectrum that Verizon and AT&T have, you know, I, this is what's going on right now. Ooh, Alabama's getting coverage, 5G Ultra Wideband? Really? Ah, Birmingham, that makes sense. Look at all this 5G Ultra Wideband, though. That's a good start. Hopefully it's, it is there. <laughs> some of the map... Um, exaggerations from what people are telling me are, are aggravating them. Here's Ohio to give you guys a sense of how they're doing here. This is the Columbus area. This is the Cincinnati area. Uh, looks to be built decent. They've got some sites out there. Nice. Okay. Here's the Cleveland market, the county right over here. All right. And uh, they, they've been building outside of the county too. You got Youngstown, Warren, Ohio. You guys can check it out. I'll put this. I'll put the Spectrum Ownership, the Spectrum Omega website. I'll, I'll share this link with you, the map of Verizon's holdings, the, how, how their Spectrum is located, and, and all of that, and then the FCCC auction. I'll, I'll put all that for you guys. Long video, but I wanted to give you guys a deep dive into how they're doing this, what they're doing, and what it's gonna, how it's going to perform. It's going to be really fast. You know, Don't be bashful on the backhaul, Verizon. You're going 100-plus megabits, uh, excuse me, 100-plus megahertz of Spectrum. You better be going multi-gig backhaul. Let's see it. All right. If you learned anything, give this video a like. If you want to help others, share it. Subscribe for more if you're new here and turn on the bell notification so you never miss an upload. And if you appreciated this, comment down below. And if you have any questions, comment as well. 
and ask. I'm sure I can help you. Maybe we answer some questions as well as community members. They help out a lot too. You guys are great. Thank you so much. Links in the description for everything we covered in today's video. And then also my Patreon page, support us. Get early access to exclusive videos not found anywhere else. And also my Twitter handle. And if you have business inquiries, send them to the Gmail address in the description. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. Peace.